Nargis Nerhan, having in mind all of the positive developments that have taken place over the last decades of transition, what to your opinion are the most important issues facing Afghan civil society and the Afghan government at the moment? I will see as Afghans as a whole, regardless of government and civil society, right now we are facing three issues at the national level, which is going to affect life of each and every Afghan. Uh, that's the upcoming elections uh, for presidential election as well as for parliamentary. Uh, the military transition, you mean, you mean withdrawal of uh, international forces and full responsibility of security to Afghan uh, national security forces and as well as the peace or the political settlement process. Uh, each of them are coming uh, with their deadlines by end of 2014 that we have to achieve something. And um, these are the issues that they have their own major challenges and as well as they also have their own major opportunities that we can explore. So for us as Afghans, uh, regardless of our uh, sectors, if we see government, civil society or private sector, what is really important for us to come together and be able to, that we are managing each of these issues um, more wisely and smartly and then be able to actually um, uh, ma complete each of these processes or, uh, or actually overcome each of these issues in a much more subtle way so that we are not actually uh, returning Afghanistan back to civil war or actually violent. So these three are very issues are very important for us uh, till end of 2015, I must say. How would you assess the ongoing process for the presidential and provincial council elections? Uh, the election, especially the presidential one, is coming in a very interesting time. I remember since 2010 when the, uh, uh, NATO uh, announced withdrawal of forces, every one of us were thinking that well, there is going to be a life beyond 2014 for Afghans or not, how we are going to face the year 2014 and uh, how we are going to uh, prepare ourselves mentally for that. So that was quite in like challenging time for us that every one of us were very much afraid of 2014's arrival because with that actually you'll have so many challenges and we thought that we, are, we were not able to be able to manage those challenges. And we kept on talking about all the challenges that we were going to have in 2014, which was somehow actually reducing from our moral to be to prepare ourselves. For that, but then beginning of 2014 started with presidential election, where actually we had 11 candidates who went and registered themselves and began in like their contest for the election, and then they start officially started their campaign. Now with their campaign, we saw a totally in like different dynamic in Afghanistan that actually kept every, each and every one of us so busy with the election. Some of us in the civil society trying to monitor the situation. Some of us in the media trying to raise awareness and have public debates about it. And rest of us in the government still trying to actually manage and maintain the uh, activities of the state institutions. And those one of us who are in the politics trying to actually have their own very different and I must say quite innovative campaign to be able to attract people and their votes. So that itself brought, brought a totally different dynamic uh, in Afghanistan and changed our perspective that still there are opportunities that we can grab and still in like we can think uh, and we can see in like a different Afghanistan beyond 2014. And at the provincial level, uh, I must say that in like few weeks, a uh, few days before the uh, campaign has just started. So if you come to, uh, to Afghanistan, mainly in Kabul, you see that in each and every uh, corner of the city and as well as provinces, uh, we have big pictures uh, and slogans of the candidates for both presidential and, and provincial uh, uh, councils uh, uh, election. And they are having their own campaigns. Uh, they are able to actually mobilize people and uh, provide quite realistic uh, uh, commitments to them, and uh, which they are going to be held accountable, they know that this time. So I see personally that the preparation is going on so far very well. And I just hope that uh, the only thing that I'm a bit fearing is the meddling of the government in the whole process, which will jeopardize it. But I also see that there's enough pressure so far uh, by the civil society, by media, and as well as by the candidates themselves to make sure that uh, the, the government is not meddling in the process. Do you think the Afghan people do give credibility to this process? Absolutely. 
uh, if you watch Afghan TVs and if you listen to Afghan radios and if you visit uh, Afghanistan, you see that every day in each and every province of Afghanistan, uh, there are thousands of people that they are coming in different gatherings through different platforms and they're having interaction with the candidates for presidential as well as for provincial election. And that in itself shows that Afghan people do care and do give credit to election. And that's why they come into different uh, platforms, though they understand the security challenges of coming together, but still they come together and they try to have interaction and raise their concerns and as well as communicate their expectations to the candidates. What is your assessment of the extremely slow moving process towards political settlements? Uh, I think we have to be patient with political settlement and peace process for Afghanistan. Uh, there are countries that it took them more than a decade to be able to come into a political settlement. So giving such a short deadline for Afghanistan to come into a political settlement is very unrealistic, especially that the country has uh, just passed through uh, three more than three decades of civil war. That itself actually has uh, le left behind many grievances among the people, uh, uh, quite a number of, I must say, conflict. Uh, at the community level as well as at the international level and um, and that in itself also left lots of in like hatreds among the victims so for that it takes people to mentally prepare themselves that you know, like they will be forgiving what they have done what happened to them what happened to their country and how much it took all afghans in like uh, uh, back instead of forward all these in like civil wars so i think we really have to give enough genuine time to afghans to be able to prepare themselves for a genuine and transparent and open uh, political uh, settlement that all of us would agree upon and would be able to actually really forgive each other and be able to move forward. For that, I think we do need as a human being much lo longer time than the uh, um, quite, uh, I must say that you know, like, uh, uh, um, I'm uh, logical and as well as quite professional deadlines that we give ourselves. Can there be a result to the elections without a credible peace process? I think these two are absolutely two separate processes that we have to separate them from one another. Uh, some people think that first we have to have political settlement, then we have to have election. And I'm one of those that I believe that first we have to have election, we have to have a credible administration uh, who would be able to improve governance and have more in like public support and have more in like legitimacy amongst the people and then be able to actually uh, open up the whole political settlement and negotiation process uh, from a much more stronger position than the current one that we, that we have. So for that we need to have a credible election first, be able to have an administration who is much more committed and see themselves in like in their power for coming five years and have more public support and are able to improve governance to people and then with the support of people open a political negotiation process uh, uh, for the, for the um, uh, armed opposition of uh, the administration. What would you say is the most important step that Afghan civil society needs to take moving beyond 2014? Uh, I think two things which are really important, first of all, supporting the new administration. And when we say supporting, that means that we have to stay engaged with the new administration. We have to closely monitor their activities. We have to uh, present them alternatives uh, besides criticizing uh, whatever you know, like wrong decision or I must say immature decisions that they are making. And at the same time, continuously supporting them and building trust between the Afghan civil society and next administration. At the same time, more awareness raising amongst the people that why we have to support the administration, why we have to hold them accountable for the votes that people have given to them. And also uh, uh, providing more moral support to our national security forces uh, because we believe that that's the only uh, forces that should provide security services to Afghan people. And at the same time, like we're focusing more on Afghanistan in internal affairs and as well as uh, foreign policy. So that like we are able to to bring around uh, sessions of advocacy outside of Afghanistan based on a very clear uh, a policy that should be articulated by the next administration in consultation with Afghan civil society, and strengthening governance, combating corruption is really important. 
because when we had rounds of consultation and from all 34 provinces uh, with different group of civil society, meaning we had with women, we had with youth, with religious leaders, with ulamas, uh, with media, with civil society groups, with all of them. Interestingly, before anything, they highlighted corruption as one of their uh, main uh, issues that they would like the next, next administration to address. So for that, we have our list of priorities from more than 1,000 Afghans that, you know, what they expect the new administration to work on. So based on that, we have to develop our strategies to make sure that we are staying engaged and we are helping the government in terms of their prioritization and then being able to deliver to Afghan people and be accountable to them. If you could picture a dream of Afghanistan from the year 2024, so for the next 10 years, how would the country look like? Uh, for me, first of all, uh, Afghanistan should have enough domestic uh, revenue to be able to uh, fund at least its operation cost. Because that will bring full sovereignty for Afghanistan. Uh, secondly, I believe in like, strong state institutions which are pro providing at least basic services to people. And they are allowing Afghans and mainly civil society to have access to information and to be able to raise awareness according to information and hold them back accountable for the information. And at the same time, an Afghanistan which is inclusive of all uh, ethnicities and um, uh, different uh, groups of the society where actually we accept each other, uh, we tolerate each other and we begin to accommodate each other in a country and like, make sure that we are working together to move the country forward. Afghanistan is definitely going to have its own challenges even off beyond 2014 but what I also expect that the nature of challenges are going to be very different than now. I don't want to have the challenges of the um, violation of humans, right, basic human rights beyond 2014 but I do want that you know, people will come forward and demand more rights for themselves than the current and basic ones that we are demanding right now.